Hello there, folks. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Nautis Home Maritime Simulator or a ship simulator. Now, primarily on my channel via YouTube, I mostly do things with rail sim, train sim, uh, so on and so forth. But I do really, really enjoy pretty much all kinds of machinery and simulation, uh, for that matter, of said machinery. Tanks, planes, ships, and of course, trains. You name it. Now, there haven't really been anything in many years in the, you know, ship simulation department. There was the the couple of games that were on Steam uh, over a decade ago with a lot of DLC. Uh, and this is, in fact, if I'm not mistaken, from the exact same company, V-Step. But they've kind of taken their focus in another direction uh, for professional use, but they also offer it uh, for you to use at home in a just simulation or gaming sense, if you will. So this sped up footage of some uh, various gameplay that I recently did, of course we'll get into the actual sim in a moment, uh, is of the Nautis Home Maritime Sim, again by V-Step. So in 2002, V-Step was formed to offer marine and safety training in the most realistic virtual manner possible. Now they're based out of the Netherlands in Rotterdam and they of course created uh, a couple of titles which were I think it was just called Ship Simulator, Ship Simulator Extremes, there's European Ship Simulator and they kind of just disappeared off off the Steam store and I'm uh, I'm regarding Steam uh, you know where you download PC games on PC obviously so now, not as home is a maritime and ship simulation you can use at home. So essentially, it was taken from their commercial and professional offerings. Uh, features realistic 3D ship simulation uh, based on hydrodynamics and vessel behavior, which feels really, really nice in this, by the way. Uh, you've got various training modules, including a, kind of like a free roam, if you will. Um, with you know vessel selection, weather selection, environment or map selection, if you want to think of it like that, from Hong Kong to New York. Now there are numerous training scenarios within numerous kind of chapters of training, and then there's sort of just scenarios. But this is currently in early access, and they just hit their one year. Uh, milestone of this being in early access and I've had my eye on it for a while um, V-Step was able to give me access to the game to play around with and and just see what I think of it and of course make a video to put on YouTube and uh, that's what we're doing here today so you know they've kind of changed a few things in, in the direction department and then of course just the way it looks overall I feel like this looks a lot better than some of their older offerings of course the older offerings were over 10 years ago naturally but uh, it, this has also got uh, like a full suite of interfaces you've got charts radar control so now of course the only kind of downside to all of this since it's no longer uh, offered on Steam via PC is it's a monthly subscription so it's roughly about 10 bucks 50 cents per month uh, I believe it's 650 right now in EA and of course it's not the end of the world I know there's a ton of people that don't like the whole subscription thing yes we have millions of subscriptions to everything nowadays from streaming services you name it but you can look at it one way, whereas if you spend six bucks, see if you like it, and if you don't, it's six bucks. You know, that's still less than a Happy Meal. Of course, you don't have to continue your subscription. Or you can get an entire six month uh, for roughly about 32 bucks is what it translates to in US dollars. But this offers quite a bit. I've been playing around with this for quite a while. I've had a few things come up which kind of stopped my progress in trying to bring this video and and uh, you know bring it together and make the video and get it done but uh, we're here now we're gonna try and go over what all you can do but essentially this was made for professional use so you know actual maritime operations where they'll have like a massive uh, concave three four five ten screen set up with real controls and it's in the sim and so they train uh, maritime and ship uh, training and operation uh, within this and they just offered it as well for home users such as myself and uh, others so the system requirements are actually pretty low as well let me see if I can find where they're at I 
don't quite remember. Ah, here's the uh, here's the actual pricing bit right here. So one month is about six euro. Uh, the system requirements are, of course, Windows, PC, or Notebook 10 or newer, so Windows 11 as well. Uh, you need at least an NVIDIA 1064 GB or AMD equivalent, Intel i5 or AMD equivalent, 15 GB download and install space, so it's not too large, and about 16 GB of system memory, of course, and naturally internet access because it's sort of a live service. Every time you start it, uh, it's going to check for updates and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and crack into it here and take a look. So if you purchase a membership for a month or six months or whatever you you know intend to do, uh, you'll get a, a launcher or an installer. And then once you do that uh, and you install it, you'll get a couple of things that will immediately pop up, which is, of course, the access to the sim itself. Uh, and then you'll get a community area and then of course like kind of a tutorial or a guide area which is all very very helpful so this is the main menu and it may seem very bare bones but you got to keep in mind once again this wasn't meant to be a game this wasn't really meant to be uh, a source of enjoyment so to speak although a lot of people enjoy sims myself included of course so it doesn't have all the trappings of you know some other what may have simulator in their title of said game or actual simulator it's it's very basic but it does what you need it to do one of the best absolute epic best things about it is your controls so i have got my uh rhino x56 hotas uh, plugged in to use the controls with the the you know the the thrusters azimuth uh, propulsion everything you name it set up plug and play good to go all you got to do is set it up so you can see it right down here and uh, you can also just use keyboard controls mouse and keyboard of course uh, you know just like everything else with PC naturally but this really got me kind of excited because it's it's ease of use and you can plug in just about anything you have got and set it up to use with whatever paprio you got um, to control these ships which is really really darn cool so that's one of the things right off the bat I've got that already set up so you've got your courses exploration and a free roam so the courses go through a lot of things basic controls reading the instruments using charts using radar uh, and then hold on sorry let's back up here go back to courses hit back then you've got basic maneuvering and you've got all of these and then you back up again maneuvering two and then you've got all of these to do uh, of course you don't have to do any of these if you know you can just hop right into free roam and just kind of mess around and try to get a feel for it yourself maneuvering three which has got some as well and they do get a little bit more difficult and then anchoring which is a whole thing in itself and then there's exploration so these are sort of like uh just predetermined scenarios and a lot of these are really darn cool this one here where you cross the english channel um into france uh a coast guard rescue uh off of sandy hook in new york uh let's see i remember uh leaving san francisco in the dark with a uh, car carrier these are all really cool i can't wait to see some more of these uh, and something that I feel would be a really great addition to this is to allow the user or the player to kind of create their own scenario. So you can kind of sort of do that with clicking free roam. And then from here, you would choose your environment. So you've got the Rhine Gorge, Gulf of Mexico, uh, Rotterdam, Hong Kong, English Channel, Training Area, uh, New York, San Francisco, Singapore, and Sydney. So then you would choose your area in the free roam, for example. So here's the English Channel, um, Calais to Dover, of course. So we'd select that. So that's going to be the environment. And then you can choose your vessel. So here's where the fun stuff begins. You've got quite a few additions. And they actually just added a ship here, this, this thing here called the Kingfisher. But you've got the Leocadia um, shallow draft coaster. So it's a, a boat that, that normally sticks to coasts or, or can you know traverse shallow water um we've got the N NV. i don't know if i'm saying these names right go for it um which is a huge container vessel uh which carry like 90 percent of the world's non-bulk cargo basically uh the vigo 
which is just like a, a pleasure yacht, if you will, something like you'd see in Monaco, for example. Uh, the Zonendale, 100 meter length, large inland vessel transporting liquids. Um, what else we got? The Dogger Bank, uh, trains, passengers, port to port. I think this is the thing used in the, uh, the Dover Calais scenario. Olena, a tugboat, Odysseus, offshore platform, and sort of rescue boat. Aitos, which is a uh, pilot vessel, so takes uh, pilots to navigate troublesome areas and ports, um, you know, to and from uh, large ships coming into the harbor of the port. Clipper Canary, another kind of just large entertainment ship. Uh, Alameda, which is a Coast Guard, um, I'm assuming it's a cutter. Uh, the Hermelin, which is an inland bulk carrier, so, so another like riverboat, if you will, or a coaster. The Chevy O Bandit, this thing's pretty cool. This, of course, is a car ship. Uh, the Arcturus, a super tanker. This thing is absolutely massive, too. The Pomoxis, a uh, feeder ship. So, this kind of, this is one of your ships that just kind of takes some cargo in between ports that may not be, you know, totally long distance or, you know, help out ports that may not be able to accommodate larger ships. Uh, the Sereno, um, one of those kind of like European river uh, river cruise ships, which I've always wanted to do. They look very cool. And then the Kingfisher. So you would just select one of these, and then bam, you've got that. And then you've got your conditions, which uh, you can just set to any kind of random thing, really, or these presets. And I got to say, the water and the physics of the water in Nauta's home is some of the best-looking liquid i have seen in anything on pc whether it be a game or sim or whatever it looks absolutely epic it looks really really nice you can change the date the time you got your wind speed uh wind direction and it will get crazy current speed current direction sea effects so we got six foot or six meter visibility you can take that all the way down or right the way up Cloudiness, of course, clear or completely overcast. Rain, driving rain, thunder and lightning. Just check this out. I don't believe I've actually seen the thunder and lightning yet. Maybe it's only like once you select. So that is your free roam. So, for example, we will go back now. And we will go into exploration so these are all the courses I know it's probably not the most enthralling thing in the world to watch because these are large ships they take a while to move around it's more of an experience you got to do it yourself type of thing so the courses I'm not really going to go over at all we'll just kind of go on exploration and we'll look at uh, we'll do the English Channel one and we'll fire that up and take a look all right, so this is how your session will begin, essentially sort of like a briefing screen. Now it simply says you start in the Dover Harbor. Your destination is the uh, Calais Ferry Terminal. Site is limited, so look out for traffic. Tells you where you're at uh, and all that good stuff. So we'll go ahead and hit continue. And that thunder and lightning is not from this scenario it's because i selected it in free roam and i guess it just kind of saved in the sound or the you know however the heck that works so i have got my hotas hooked up to this right now we are currently um in the con tower or at the wheel or the wheelhouse or whatever you'd like to call it uh you can click your views over here this is all your views so you can get on the bow and look around looks like we've got a ship coming in right now so it's best we wait for a moment anyway and these ship models look pretty good now I wouldn't say they are you know hi-fi um, to the nth degree but I feel like they get the job done for the most part they do look fairly nice we'll go outside and take a look some of them I feel like look a little bit better than others because maybe they were made at a certain time of this Sims infancy compared to some of the newer stuff uh, but for the most part the models do look okay um, the skybox and the lighting generally looks okay for the most part uh, this of course is like a large ferry ship the Dogger Bank as it's called um, and one of the other things that I'm not extremely fond of is the lighting. So you can actually see the lighting in the background. It 
it doesn't look the best. It you know seems like something fairly antiquated, especially for a sim. But again, you got to keep in mind, you know, a lot of this was built for professional sim, actual real world usage. So things like that, you can kind of understand where it's not a pressing issue, uh, if you will. The other thing is inside the wheelhouse or the helm is some of the stuff is very limited. Now, some of the stuff does look really nice. Um, but on the other hand, I'd like to see a little bit more detail in the, uh, in the wheelhouses and the, uh, the crew area. Got this ship coming in now. Uh, but for the most part, like the basic model itself does look okay. It'd be nice to have some of these screens lit up. I know in, in Ship Simulator and Ship Sim Extremes and all that, some of them did light up and whatnot. Um, again, this is not that. Um, so we got that view. You can get on the stern as well. See your radar, back of the ship. See that other ship coming in there. You can see the actual wind blowing the flag there and then you can get on the wings to pilot the ship in and out of a harbor or a river or whatnot we can get on the starboard side here all right so let's try and get out of here so i've got it hooked up again to my hotas let's see so i don't believe we are anchored we are not starboard port are both up you can control those uh which is pretty neat we'll take a look at that in a moment Something else they just added was spotlighting. They just added this, like, I think uh, about two, three weeks ago, maybe. So you've got a spotlight now, which is kind of neat. So if you're doing sort of like a rescue deal uh, with the Coast Guard or whatnot, uh, you can use this to help find ships. So you can actually, let's get this out of the way. That's another thing about these panels. This reminds me of a really nice um, flight sim, if you will, with some of this UI and HUD that you can pop out, you know, put on a second screen have a totally clear screen in front of you um, if you'd like but you can move the spotlight around via clicking and mouse I'm sure you could uh, bind it to something as well if you want you could change the actual focus of the thing make it broad or narrow lower the brightness we'll see what it looks like outside as well there's just a neat little detail that they recently added let's go ahead and shut that bad boy back off we'll get rid of that now your signals of course are your navigation lights and sound signals so the nav lights we're going to set it to underway because we're about to get underway so you've got your port and starboard side lights which do illuminate let's get this out of the way so we can take a peek and there they are again now I, you know this is where the lighting kind of comes through and not being the best in the world it's just this real fuzzy almost looks like a you know some kind of christmas light or something from a distance just kind of a blurry thing uh, but it's there and when it's dark and you need to see other ships There's that so you can actually see that let's pop that back in uh, You can set it to whatever else you need to set it to and then you've got your sound signal. So this tells you um, You know basically what you need to do sort of like in a train uh, in American trains for example doing a crossing um, Too long short long type of deal same, you know same with maritime stuff So I think getting underway is just one long which we'll do here in a minute. So let's go ahead and get back in the wheelhouse and we'll give her a little thrust. You can see up in the middle there, you can see the actual pitch of the props and the RPM of the engine itself. We've got it to about 30% uh, throttle power. We'll raise it up to about 40. Of course, the more power and uh, propellant we'll say propellant that doesn't sound right uh, you've got the easier you can control a lot of these vessels and really any vessel on the water whether it be a small boat or a large craft all right so we are underway we're doing about five knots uh, you can also see on your gyro your heading your degree your lats and longs uh, the date uh, you of course got your time you can see the roll on the C, the echo sounder, so it looks like we've got about five and a half meter at the rear and roughly five and a half at the front as well. It tells you the current, which there's currently not any. Uh, your wind, wind direction. Um, you, of course, got your radar over on your radar. You can choose whether you want it up close. Generally, in, in tight quarters like this, I like to have it. Um, as close as possible I'll do like half a mile at the very least so let's go ahead and start turning this thing a 
Let's see if we can get it here. I think I waited too long. Yeah, <laughs> I might have waited a bit long. So luckily we have got our bow thruster, so this little doohickey right here in the middle, which of course all I'm controlling with my whole task, but you can just use your mouse and keyboard as well. We'll try and uh, bow thrust it over a little bit here. Oh, we forgot the uh, the horn. Now, some of the sounds are pretty decent. They are quite repetitive um, over and over. Some of the engine sounds, I feel like, are a bit too loud in the wheelhouse, especially on some of these larger vessels where you should almost just hear sort of like a low hum uh, or something like that, if you will. Um, you know, maybe with some windows open, but generally you wouldn't really have windows open. Because out on the sea in the open ocean, you'd have just crap blowing everywhere for the most part. I don't know if we're going to make it out of here. I should have started my turn a bit sooner. Uh, we are hard over. Hopefully no one is over there. Oh, criminy. Let's get on the uh, starboard wing here. We might be all right. We're doing six knots, 45 degree hard over. Come on. We got this. That sailboat better watch it. Oh, geez. Oh, jeezy. But anyway, some... Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't concentrate right now. Come on, we got this. Uh, but yeah, again about the sounds, they do get a, a bit repetitive and sound kind of thin. Uh, it'd be nice to get some of the sounds updated, uh, especially in the wheelhouse itself. Uh, they're just too tinny, too loud for the most part, whereas, you know, on a lot of these larger ships, you're not going to hear much except for the odd rattle or rumble or just sort of like a vibration sound. Oh, come on, man. All right, we have this. You can also look under as well. So you can see that we don't have much clearance under there. About five meters. Man, we are close. Now, I don't want to swing the tail end of the thing and hit the wall either. So I'm going to go ahead and try and straighten out now. And actually cut back. We might make it out of here, but I'm going to run right into these markers. I'm not doing a very good job of trying to show off this uh, maritime set here. This did not go well. Of course, I chose the one of the largest ships you can, which probably wasn't the best idea. All right, full thrust. Let's see if we can get this bad boy out of here. Now, you've also got your charts, which, of course, you need to pay attention to. Oh man, we just about got this thing out. And that's one of the really key points of this sim as well, is the way it feels. Operating these ships, uh, they feel heavy. It, you know, the hydrodynamics, the feeling of these things on the ocean or water feels pretty decent. You can always see a, a bit of a lean. So like right now, you can tell we're kind of leaned a little bit. Uh, you've got the sway of the ocean, the swell, the wind. It's really nice. I mean, I, I feel like I feel like this is more of an ocean and river simulator than sort of a maritime simulator, if you will, because it's done fairly nice. So you've also got your charts over here. We'll pop that out. You are most definitely going to need that. You can zoom in just about as far as you want. You can see where all your buoys and markers are and what types of buoys and markers there are, whether it be starboard or port, uh, the very edge of a, uh, a traffic channel. All right, we need to cut back south. You can also center if you get a little off course. And you can also tell what's deep and what's not so deep. So we definitely want to get out of the deeper stuff because we are, holy moly, we got under five meters there for a minute. So we're going to hard over and then level it out. And then as you can see, it is the entire map straight to Dover over to Calais now the only thing that kind of stinks about this is you can't really see you know your berth where you're supposed to dock um, and a lot of that so sadly 
while these charts are here in the sim for home use um, they're they're pretty bare bones but the thing is again this is meant for professional use so a lot of these guys a lot of these companies with professional usage you know they've got their nav charts they they've got everything they need for the most part to kind of tie in with this so one thing you can do that's pretty neat is uh, use some free stuff online which of course a lot of us do that play flight sims as well that would be very useful in this so one of the tools you can use is gpsnauticalcharts.com now it's of course asking for a subscription up here uh, to use you know apps on your phones and blah 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 but you go down to regions uh, let's see let's see if we can find exactly where we're at here if I can find the actual region I don't know if everything is on here where's the UK UK Ireland scroll down we don't want Ireland I don't know if it's on here likely not looking in the oh geez oh, is that it south coast possibly go ahead and click on that oh that's southwest yeah we don't want that so we're over here oh, that's Folkestone I lied anyway this is the chart you can basically find uh, anything you need I think this has uh, slightly more updated uh, markers and buoys uh, and you can kind of find where you need to go um, it's a little bit easier to find where you can dock uh, using this um, the uh, the GPS I'm trying to find I've gotten a bit lost jeez I don't know this area well at all Calais I was nowhere near it jeez Louise Floridian what are you gonna do so here's Calais so here's where you would come in uh, you can see a couple of berths. Now, I'm not totally sure where the ferries would go. I'm assuming it's this. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's go over to Dover. Let's see. Let's make sure we don't run into anything as we are looking straight ahead. So, I'm assuming it's one of these pink lines here. And then, of course, you would just follow it. Um, Blats and Longs. And then over to Calais. And then just find, you know, wherever you want to go to dock. So that was just a tiny bit of Dover to Calais, a ferry. Um, the, the bread and butter of this, I think, is, of course, going in and out of ports or harbors. And not so much just sailing in wide open seas. Um, you know people do it all the time in real life obviously and it can be done there's pretty much a huge area the Gulf of Mexico for example but a lot of it is this and my favorite that I've done so far and not as home so far is this stuff right here so this is kind of just sailing up the Rhine uh, with one of these coasters or these small uh, ships we'll take a peek at it here we'll go to view and then orbit and this little fella right here Now, these are some narrow, narrow uh, channels and canals that run all throughout here. And it's, it's fairly interesting trying to navigate these things. As you can see on the map, uh, this is the Rhine. We're kind of back off the Rhine here a minute. And then we've got a little uh, channel that we've got to turn out into and then head on up the Rhine. And then you can just essentially go uh, wherever you'd like on this, uh, although this is a this is one of the uh, kind of preordained scenarios that tells you where to go so the briefing says ultimate inland challenge you start in mines and head downstream your destination is the harbor of st gore do not get distracted by the views and there are views because a lot of this uh sim actually looks pretty decent um you know it doesn't have cutting edge triple a graphics uh honestly but i feel like a lot of the skybox and the ocean and the waves and the hydrodynamics themselves make up for a lot of that it sort of reminds me of uh for any of you that know any bus sim out there uh this old sim called omzi 
which was a, a bus or a coach sim that kind of gives me that vibe where a lot of that game could look uh, fairly nice, as does this as well. Um, not to totally knock it, but a main part of the the visuals or the graphics, if you will, to me is the the land or the uh, the trees and the vegetation and the buildings and things like that. They could definitely uh, use a little work, uh, as could my controls here. Try and get this thing out of this narrow channel. So that it's it's stuff like this that you're going to be faced with. It's not all uh, terribly tough. Some of it is tougher than others. You've got a ton of training courses. I didn't really show any of those at all. And uh, there's just a lot to do within Not As Home. It's it's a serious deal. It's not just kind of playing around with a ship, uh, you know, or anything like that. Sure, you could get in and do that if you would like, but this. It's pretty close to the real deal of getting in and out of harbors or ports, uh, whether it be, you know, smaller ships like this or large bulk carriers, uh, you name it. But it's a, a fairly interesting sim. Uh, I'm interested to see what they come out with next. I know they do have a, a save feature coming down the line because, for example, this scenario right here is or can take you three and a half hours. So it's fairly realistic in that regard that if you're on a ship sailing down a river it's going to take you a long 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 time now like i said it would be nice to get uh you know the chart kind of topped up a little bit a little bit more detail um there is quite a bit that you know can help you out and, and get you started uh, on their website and in the community section but you've pretty much got everything you need uh right out of the gate uh, but but you know as far as some of the pros the ships feel great they feel you know weighty and move great hydrodynamically that's the uh, the key word of the video obviously I've said it about 12 times now um, you know the water looks fantastic whether it's calm windy uh, it's just really really nice looking some of the best water I've seen in anything made in any PC game uh, complete freedom and training of course controller binding options with anything you want Hopefully we don't hit the wall here. Let's cut over a bit harder. The sounds are decent in some respects, but they do get a bit repetitive. Uh, I just feel like some of the, you know, compression could be touched in the, in the bass and kind of muffled a bit to make it sound like you're in an actual larger vessel, um, not with all the windows wide open with your, you know, ear right on the side of the uh, engine block, so to speak. Um, and some pretty highly detailed ship exteriors. So you've got well over a dozen ships now that they have within the sim and there's some pretty decent details especially on the uh like the bulk liquid carriers with all the piping and things like that it looks really really nice now of course some of the negatives which there's always pros and cons to just about everything right is of course that it's subscription based it kind of stinks that's just how it is uh stinks of course from my perspective it'd be nice if it was a one flat rate fee uh, but again, you know, if you're not interested, you simply don't try it. Uh, if you are, maybe drop the six bucks and see if you like it and then keep on going or uninstall it, stop the subscription if they come out with a big update, you know, install it and sub again, I guess. I don't know, but, you know, that's kind of a negative. Um, the graphics do seem a bit dated in some areas, like I mentioned you know mainly the the vegetation and, and buildings and things like that but that's you know it's not the focus of the sim so to speak so that's sort of understandable uh in its own right it, you know it suits its simulation purpose now there's no in sim charts uh in the sense of any kind of high detail now there is you know this smaller one in the top left hand corner um it'd be nice to have a bit more detail I think we have a ship. Uh, holy moly, we do. <laughs> oh boy. You know, I thought I saw something. We'll just we'll just thrust back here a little bit. Just let him get on through. It looks like he's moving at a pretty good rate. Yeah. We are full thrust reverse. Okay, yeah, he should get by. Should have been paying attention, trying to talk at the same time. 
Um, but anywho, some, some newer charts would definitely be nice. Oh, this is going to be tight. Uh, the bare bones interiors, it might be nice to have a, a slightly more updated interior, some screens on and things like that. Uh, some of the stuff does look pretty nice, though. Uh, nice little anchor in the corner over there. You can actually see quite a bit through here. Get your encyclopedias back there. Um, you know, main, mainly screens uh, is the biggest thing with me. I think it could use that um, very, very much. Uh, and, and as of right now, there's very little free roam and scenario options. Um, you know, you can choose a lot of stuff, but being able to choose, uh, you know, thinking like sort of like train simulation type things where you can set up some AI trains, have them go A to B, have them stop in a certain situation, set up stuff around ports uh, and harbors and things like that. Uh, that would be nice because as of right now, I believe it's just you when you set up a free roam scenario. And then of course some some slightly better sounds, but but other than those things, I think it's it's a pretty solid start. This thing is, like I mentioned, in its infancy. It's only been about a year. They just celebrated their anniversary. They are you know they're adding stuff to this all the time. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. You can spend a lot of time in this, and it's very relaxing. I mean, who doesn't like being on the water? For starters, I'm sure there's those of you and people out there that don't that's totally fine but you can just pop on some tunes you know and sail across the the english channel or gulf of mexico or you know out of hong kong or or whatnot and it's uh it's it's very fulfilling and relaxing if you're into ships and, and maritime stuff and things like that look at this wave action right now going under the bridge but i'm i'm really enjoying this so i thought i'd you know show it out on the channel just in case anyone else might be into maritime or ship simulation since there haven't really been anything in many many years but uh this is not as home from v-step i'll link down below where you can go and find it but uh i think that is going to do it for now guys thanks for watching hope you found the video informative and i'll catch you next time see ya